Hey guys, it's Andy here. In this video I'm going to show you some of the steps I took to building this spot welder. It's not perfect. I maybe did a few things that are not normally done, but I think it turned out really well and a few solutions that I haven't seen other people do. Uh, this video is mostly just some of the problems that I came across in my solutions. It's not a full video on how to go from start to finish because I feel like with these spot welders a lot of it's situational so it's best for you to watch a few different videos of how different people did it and then decide for yourself uh, which parts are best for you and what you want to do. So for me I found it best to have this type of design where it's like a pen whereas other people make it like some kind of stationary clamping mechanism this is designed specifically to suit the battery spot welding if you have any questions just let me know there will be a link in this, the description of a video that I used to build mine and I think that he did a really good job so I, I highly recommend you watch his video as well you can see his end result was very different than mine, but it used the same circuit board. Thanks guys, and uh, hope you enjoy. I have all my parts together to build my spot welder. I've got my microwave transformer. I'll have to cut off this, this group here. Cut it off, and then run some wire. I've taken this guy apart so I can run proper uh, wiring. I have cut apart my microwave transformer. I've used a bunch of electrical tape and taped it up. I was watching one YouTube video. He said to get rid of these plates here. So I guess I'm gonna have to figure out how to de delicately take apart those plates. So basically the first step was cutting cutting this transformer up. Used a hammer, a flat-headed screwdriver, a drill bit, like a pretty large drill bit about the size of this hole and also use a sawzall with a really long blade and you just cut through. Be really careful because I nicked this guy down here by accident. Next you need a power supply, right? This is the power supply that I found and then I cracked it apart. I ended up with this and all I have to do is just remove these diodes and the capacitor uh, because apparently this guy needs AC voltage only, not DC voltage. So this is what it's gonna look like in the end, which is pretty nice. I had to do a lot of uh, careful measuring and then cutting holes because this grid fin formation was quite annoying to work with, especially uh, figuring out. It was useful but annoying because I didn't need to use a Dremel. I just used these guys and I could just clip, clip it off and then this file to uh, smooth off and then I had to drill these holes out a slightly bigger for these LEDs and I'll put stickers on here labeling what each light means and I'll have a sticker for each one of these dials. Very very tight fit but everything will fit even uh, the wire coming out here. I used uh, four two meter lengths of 12 AWG wire because I didn't have thick enough wire that was long enough. So I had this down here, and uh, it's pretty thick, but I didn't feel like going and getting more of it. I asked uh, Average Joe, uh, and he said, oh, probably work. So I did it. <laughs> the foot pedal was self-explanatory, really. Um, a strange noise. <laughs> Ooh, let's see this again. Oh, Jesus. It's, uh, it's too high. The settings are way too high. The microwave, um, just get one off Kijiji or Craigslist. You can get them for pretty much free. Just get, get a microwave. And the wire, I had the wire lying around, but you'll probably have to buy it. You can maybe get it from an electrician. You phone around, you ask. They usually keep all the spare stuff. You only need, like, four two meter lengths of this stuff's pretty common uh, at some uh, construction sites depending on what they are but you can just buy a big roll of 12 awg and then just take you know four two meter lengths and it seems to work just fine I'm, all of these up here i uh, spot welded them 
at the end unit, the way I built it was using these parts here, is electrical tape, these holders. These holders you can usually buy at an electronics store that specifically sells resistors, potentiometers, stuff like that. You can probably get these on eBay. You have to try and get them as large as possible. Uh, you usually get them in strips like this and then you break them down into two, two pairs. And then you t basically slide it in, slide it in and then tighten it down and then you see I, I bent the tips inward so that they're very close together. So you need, um, at Princess Auto is where I bought these, you have to wait till they go on sale and they'll go on sale for like five bucks but normally they try to sell these things for twenty dollars. They're not worth twenty dollars but I used uh, a few pieces of heat shrink so one for both of these in between in between these two spots you put heat shrink and then you use a very large piece of heat shrink. This is what I used. Just barely fit around it. If you buy these kits then you should be just fine. Connecting this this wire here is what I use. So four two meter lengths. So four times two meters of this 12 gauge wire. So that's the information on this wire. This wire I just got as scrap wire from a, some construction site years ago. But you can buy this at like Canadian Tire, something very similar, like a big spool of it and it's not a big deal. So you can just buy that. It's a lot easier than buying a big thick piece of wire, uh, in my opinion. And it works just as fine. I've had no issues at all. Once you have uh, this part all assembled, basically was able to fit two of these wires in and then the other two I like braided them around, wrapping them around and then soldering them to the other two wires. And then once I had it all together and wrapped up, then I used a, just a scrap piece of rod that gives it strength between the transition point that would be right here, because this will just snap right off. Put a 5 amp fuse right there. I, I have no clue if it matters. 12 volt power supply for the circuit board. It came out of just a wall power supply. Just zip tied up pretty heavily just to protect the wiring because this wiring here it's not exactly super strong. While you're building you should figure out your own way of doing it because this isn't necessarily perfect. You gotta be careful because you can blow holes right through your battery so you can't set it too high. I'll link a, a video that explains how to build them much better. One part in it that was really helpful that he explained and other people didn't is there's all these plates of metal that are in there and they're between the second primary and secondary. They're sitting down in there and you have to knock them out with a flathead screwdriver because otherwise you won't get very good performance. This here, I use zip tie to hold the circuit board onto here. These two potentiometers are the only thing holding the circuit board in, besides pressure of this corrugated plastic piece here. Anyways, uh, I hope you like it. I hope this gives you an idea. Look at the links in the description for a video that explains in high detail. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, and have a great day, guys. Bye.